Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 5.3 on Competition in the Marketplace and Consumer Protection and let's talk about the Puppy Bowl! How cute is that? Well, the puppies are cute, but I really want to focus on the referee, the neutral person who makes sure that the game is played fairly. And we have referees all over the place. We have them in the NFL, that's Ed Hockley, and we have them in Major League Baseball. And referees have a lot of things going on, whether they're umpires or linemen. Even Tom Brady's talking to a referee. This is a perfect example of lobbying. Okay, well, how does the government act as the referee? And what does the government do to improve the game? Today, we'll answer those questions. And with that said, go to the next slide. Our government is very interested in our economy, and one of the primary goals of government is to promote competition in the marketplace. We know that a competitive marketplace is essential in our economy, so the government promotes competition in six ways. It enforces antitrust legislation to discourage the development of monopolies. Remember this guy, Theodore Roosevelt? finishes an hour-long speech after getting shot. Roosevelt was a tough guy, and our government needs to be tough in order to keep businesses from forming into monopolies. The government also engages in global trade and encourages businesses to do so with tax incentives. It signs trade agreements to allow the easier flow of goods between the United States and other countries. An example of this is NAFTA, or the North American Free Trade Agreement. It supports business startups with grants, tax breaks, and technical assistance. It supports the startup and growth of minority and women-run businesses, and it uses a competitive bidding system to allow multiple companies to attempt to obtain government contracts. Here's the thing. The government spends a lot of money, and in doing so, it has the ability to say to multiple companies, whoever gives us the best bid, you can be the person that we spend our money on in order to keep the government moving forward. Go to the next slide. The government is trying to promote the economy, but it also needs to make sure that we have a fair playing field for all who are engaged in our economy. And one of the ways we do this is through government agencies who oversee the way individuals and companies do business. It looks like this. The legislature passes laws that are guidelines. The executive branch passes rules that must be followed by companies. Those are called regulations. And when the company Companies follow those rules correctly, they are in compliance. Guidelines, regulations, and compliance are what government agencies make sure happen when businesses are working in the economy. Government agencies regulate business on both a federal and state level and include the following examples. The Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, which regulates radio, television, satellite, wire, and cable communications. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, is a federal agency that protects the natural environment from pollution. The Federal Trade Commission, or the FTC, protects consumers by regulating against trusts and promoting consumer protection and on the state level we have the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality or DEQ which protects the natural environment from pollution on a state level. Those businesses specifically regulate business but sometimes agencies have to do a little of both. Some agencies both regulate and promote businesses. For example, the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, promotes 
and regulates the airline industry. It's trying to make people fly, and at the same time, it's trying to make sure that the airlines are following the rules when it comes to flying in the United States. Another example is the Department of Energy, which promotes and regulates the nuclear energy industry. On one hand, the Department of Energy is saying, let us build and maintain these nuclear power plants because they're good for the economy. And on the other hand, the Department of Energy is saying, let's make sure we run these power plants the right way so that we don't have a disaster. Go to the next slide. The government also promotes fairness in the economy by protecting our individual property rights. Individuals have the right of private property ownership. It's mine, not yours, and the government will work for me to make sure that I can maintain my private property ownership. How do they do that? The right to private property ownership is protected by negotiated contracts that are enforceable by law. A contract is merely an agreement between two people to do something. Some contracts only require a verbal agreement between the parties, like buying groceries or mowing somebody's lawn. You don't need to write a written contract out, you just need to have an agreement. Other contracts must be in writing. Things like buying a house, borrowing a lot of money, entering into a contract worth more than $500, and employment contracts for over one year. Those are examples of when you actually have to have a written contract. And contracts are only enforceable if the terms of the contract can be proved in court. Life's not fair. If you can't prove that there was a contract, there is no contract. And courts cannot be used to enforce illegal contracts that break the law or allow for the discrimination of a party based on race. If your contract is to commit a crime or if your contract is to discriminate against somebody else against the law, that contract cannot be enforced. Go to the next slide. So the government is promoting the economy and the government is regulating businesses and the government even protects our private property rights. But there's one more thing that the government does on behalf of all of us. Government agencies establish guidelines that protect the health and safety of the public. For example, the Food and Drug Administration sets forth rules regarding the handling and labeling of certain foods and drugs. Here's a package of a leave. A leave is a drug. Everything in that box, as well as all of the labeling outside that box, is regulated and mandated by the Food and Drug Administration. Another example is the Environmental Protection Agency, which sets guidelines regarding what is considered safe water quality and how water must be properly tested. It gets even better. Consumers may also take legal action for violations of their consumer rights. For example, consumers can sue when there is a violation of their consumer rights in court based on certain laws. One of those laws is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, which is preventing harassment from debt collectors. If debt collectors are trying to get their money and they're doing things that the law considers harassment, you can sue the debt collector for what they did. Consumers can also turn to the Bureau of Consumer Protection, which is a government agency that will address and correct a violation of your rights. The government has a tremendous reach when it comes to the economy. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.